Supernovas are the incredible, energetic explosions which take place when massive stars burn through their fuel and their gravity causes them to collapse in on themselves and explode, creating a stellar nebula in the process. Normally, scientists can predict how this explosion will play out, at least to a degree. We've only observed a handful of stars before they've gone supernova, if even that. It's an extremely rare event. But a supernova that was just recently captured in the galaxy NGC 4666 has astronomers scratching their heads. Because unlike many observed supernovae in the past, the host star was actually observed by Hubble for two years before it exploded. We're going to be talking about this curious supernova and the puzzle it represents. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you'd do if you saw a supernova in the night sky, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. Supernovae are probably not a new subject to you. But since we haven't really covered them too much on this channel, we should probably go over the basics. When a star at least five times more massive than our sun uses up its remaining fuel, its days are numbered. You see, massive stars like Betelgeuse or UY Scuti burn fuel in their cores at an insane rate. This produces a metric ton of energy, so the core burns extremely hot. The heat that the core radiates generates pressure, and that pressure also keeps the star from collapsing in on its own gravity. So basically, a star is like a balancing act between two opposing forces. The star's overwhelming gravity is always trying to squeeze it into the smallest, tiniest point possible. But the nuclear processes going on at the core create a force strong enough to resist that gravity. But when that massive star finally burns through the last of its fuel, it causes the pressure being produced by the core to drop. As you can imagine, Gravity wins the duel of forces, and the star suddenly collapses. That collapse happens so fast it causes immense cosmic shockwaves to ripple through the star, causing them to explode out in a violent supernova. What's left behind is typically a neutron star, or a white dwarf, but occasionally when stars ten times more massive than our own collapse, they can create a stellar mass black hole. Supernovae are so bright that they can outshine their galaxies for days or months, and can be seen all across the known universe. Astronomers estimate that around two or three supernovas occur every century in galaxies like our own, and because of technological advances, we're now able to observe a few hundred supernovae a year. Thanks to the observations of supernovae, scientists have learned that stars are basically like the universe's factories, producing all of the chemical elements that we know here on Earth. The cores of stars convert elements like hydrogen into heavier elements, and these heavier elements, such as carbon and nitrogen, are the basic building blocks needed for life. But only massive stars can make elements like gold or uranium. When these large stars go supernova, they spread these elements throughout their stellar neighborhood, creating a stellar nebula. This will be important later. So now that we know what a supernova is, let's move on. Supernovae are tricky. Because they're so rare, it's often hard to get a good look at the star before it explodes. Usually, we're just reacting to the explosion, frantically trying to point our telescopes in its direction before it's gone. But luckily, in the case of what has been dubbed SN 2019YVR, because it was observed in 2019, the star was actually found in the observational data of the Hubble telescope. The image is found by Charlie Kilpatrick, an astronomer at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, reveal a massive, puffy star that sounds eerily similar to Betelgeuse, before this mystery star ended its life in a supernova explosion completely devoid of hydrogen. Now, this situation is pretty incredible, because in Kilpatrick's own words, it's extremely difficult to identify the source of a supernova after the fact, because a telescope would have to have been looking at the exact region of the night sky before the event took place. And in addition to that, there are many stars that aren't visible from Earth because they're too dim or too far away. Stars like red or brown dwarfs, for example. But that is exactly what's happened. And it's offering a rare opportunity to study a very important stage of stellar evolution. There's just one little problem with this scenario. Hydrogen-free supernovae were previously thought to have only been possible from super compact and extremely hot stars, 
which this star definitely is not. So we've got a bit of a mystery on our hands here, because the star that Hubble observed little over two and a half years before going supernova has plenty of hydrogen in its outer puffy layers. The star in the Hubble photos is in the exact same place as the supernova that occurred in December of 2019. This star appears to be 46 million light years away. It's a yellow star with a temperature of 6,500 degrees Celsius, just 1,000 degrees more than our own star, which is much cooler than what the team were expecting to find. Much, much, much cooler. And happens to be 320 times wider than our sun. Kilpatrick was puzzled by that, to say the least. As mentioned before, supernova SN 2019 YVR lacked hydrogen, so the star that preceded it should have been devoid of hydrogen as well. By all rights, the star should have been super hot, super compact, no more than 50 times wider than our sun, very blue, and probably as hot as 10,000 to 50,000 degrees Celsius. But that's not what we found at all. No, this star is cool, yellow, and very thick. Yeah, something like that. So how the hell did this star lose all of that hydrogen prior to going supernova? For this type of star to have produced a hydrogen deficient supernova like the one observed in SN 2019 YVR, it would have had to have somehow lost or shed its hydrogen prior to going boom. This was a major question for Kilpatrick and his team, and fortunately they had some potential solutions. One possible scenario is that the star could have expelled most of its hydrogen into space through extremely violent eruptions, much like what we've been observing with Betelgeuse. And in fact, Hubble recently revealed that Betelgeuse's intense dimming events from late last year and earlier this year were actually caused by a traumatic outburst resulting in a massive amount of superheated material being launched out into space and forming a dust cloud that blocked the star's light from reaching us here on Earth. The same thing could have happened here, except that, you know, Betelgeuse didn't result in a supernova event. Or at least Betelgeuse hasn't exploded yet. Now, Betelgeuse isn't exactly the same as this cooler yellow star. For one, it's a red supergiant that has swelled in size thanks to more complex and involving changes in its core. So at the very least, on the surface, it doesn't look the same. But similar eruptions could have been caused by instabilities in our mystery star's core. Another possibility is that the star's hydrogen could have been stripped off by another star that orbited it. But with NGC 4666 being so far away, how could Kilpatrick's team find the answers and solve this puzzle? And are there any other explanations for this strange occurrence? Jan Eldritch, an astrophysicist at the University of Auckland in New Zealand, suggests that tuning the Hubble telescope back on that portion of the sky is an absolute must. For one, Kilpatrick's team needs to confirm that the star observed 2.6 years leading up to the supernova event is really gone. It's not enough that the star appears to be in the same location as the supernova, as, you know, space is 3D and there could have been a star behind the supernova. Man, I would hate to be them if they confirmed that this star is still there. That would probably be as bad as being featured on Ancient Aliens or Coast to Coast AM or something. <laughs> okay, maybe not that bad. But if the star is really gone, then the team could also check to see if SN 2019 YVR's progenitor star had a companion, and whether or not that star is still around the same stellar neighborhood. While this is certainly a mystery, the potential opportunity to study a star two and a half years before it went supernova is pretty amazing provided that star isn't still kicking and this wasn't just a completely different supernova. The trick, once it's confirmed, is to figure out how the star pulled it off. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment your favorite movie involving a supernova. Please don't say supernova. That movie is terrible. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get. My name's Eric Malachi, and I'll see you next time.